What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another action-packed edition of CPA Reviewed, the official podcast of another71.com. As always, I am your humble host, Jeff Elliott. Believe it or not, I am a licensed CPA in the state of Kansas, much to the chagrin of a few. All right, on today's show, hold on, back up. Today is Friday, October 18th, 2013. Happy Friday to you. Okay, so I sent out an email this last week. I asked people their thoughts on the on on the state of another 71 and whether or not you like you like to get emails from me and what type of content you would like. And one comment was they would like the podcast format to go to, <laughs> to go back, I'm 14 again, to go back to where I just kind of run and shoot um, rapid fire answering questions. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Today's show, 10 questions. Hopefully I have 10 answers. Joseph writes, I'm a 44-year-old professional that would like to accomplish one of my all-time goals, passing the CPA exam. It's been 15 years since I was in school. What is your opinion on the most effective way to get up to speed on the new exam content, requisites, and review methods? Joseph, um, the good news is you can just pick up your pick up your study course. So when you're shopping for a CPA review course, uh, watch the demo videos, check out the prices some some courses cost an insane amount of money and um you know it's like you could get their review course or you could get review course b like plus a macbook air plus an ipad so plus probably the 10 point combo so get that little plug in there um so which review course matches your learning style very important you don't like you don't want to drop uh, the price of a nice cruise for you and the missus and um, only to find out that you cannot stand the mannerisms of the instructor. Not to mean that you're shallow, but hey, you might not want to get up at 5.30 in the morning and stare at that. So something to, <laughs> something to consider. So bottom line, um, yeah, you've been, out of, you've been out of school 15 years, but you can simply... Just start your review course. Are you going to have to probably like read the text too and really study harder than your average um, student who just finished their Mac and are you know fresh out of grad school? Yeah, you're probably going to have to study a little more. But you can do it. Just go. That's it. Go. Michael says, I'm having a hard time finding someone to verify my work experience as required by my state. I had a disagreement with my old boss and now I'm working on my own and can't find anyone to verify my work experience. The state requires that a CPA from any state verify that I worked for one year in public accounting, which I've been doing. What should I do? Uh, you're going to have a hard time finding a CPA who doesn't know you. Um, I mean, I mean, the whole point is that they know you and that, and that um, they can verify your work experience versus like, hey, just... I did it. Can you sign up? Uh, you don't want to do that. So what you're probably going to have to do, Michael, is go back to your old boss and, um, you know, uh, take him out to dinner, maybe offer to wash his car, <laughs> wash his kids. Don't don't wash his kids. Watch his kids. <laughs> and, uh, and, I mean, just hopefully you didn't burn – I mean, hopefully you didn't drop a nuclear bomb on that bridge. Hopefully you just kind of um, just kind of shelled it, and uh, there's still something left to drive over. So all that to say, go back to your old boss, and I'm not really sure what that was all about. Go back to your boss and um, just be like, please, like help a brother out. So. That's what I would do. Greg writes, as I watch lecture videos and take notes, how detailed should my notes be? Does it make a difference if I type or handwrite the notes? How do I incorporate my video lectures, the text, and ninja notes? All right, let's break this up. How detailed should your notes be? Um, detailed enough. I mean, you don't want to like write the book out, but if your instructor says it, like write it down and... Um, it can be as detailed as you want it to be from the outset because hopefully later on you are going to rewrite your notes. And so you break that into that little fact nugget. So it can be detailed. Does it make a difference if you handwrite the notes or 
type it. No, I, most people probably learn best by handwriting, but some people like to type. I personally would say handwrite it. It's more, it's more emotional. <laughs> how, how do I incorporate my video lectures, the text, and ninja notes? Well, you watch, you watch your videos, you take notes. Hopefully, if you're a review course, I mean, if you're if you're dropping the equivalent of a of a uh, souped up iMac, uh, 27 inch iMac, and um, with all the bells and whistles, um, 16 gigs of RAM, um, then hopefully you don't also have to read the book because then what's the point of the video course? You, you can read the book yourself. But um, so hopefully the text is just there for kind of like looking at it, but hopefully you don't have to read it. So you watch your videos, you take notes, and then the ninja notes. So you're on the train, you're around the house in the doctor's office, you have some downtime, you're <laughs> laying there in bed with your iPad reading some ninja notes before you go to bed. <laughs> That's a nice little prop I had there. Didn't plan to do that. Um, I swear. Um, so... So you put your ninja notes on your iPad or Kindle or whatever. Take it with you wherever you go. And I mean wherever you go. Um, so yeah. Videos, notes, take the ninja notes wherever you go. Some people don't like taking notes and so they rewrite the ninja notes. That's fine. Andrew says, I failed reg twice but raised my score 10 points to a 74 after buying the 10-point combo. Hey, 10 points, 10-point combo. There you go. Would you suggest... I need to come up with a 15-point combo. <laughs> Would you suggest watching the review course videos again and taking the notes or redoing the Ninja Notes and listening to the Ninja Audio? I plan to hit the multiple choice questions either way. Uh, Ninja Notes, Ninja Audio, you have them. Good option. Use those to fill in your downtime. The biggest mistake people make when they score like a 74, which is like close but no cigar like you did, is that they don't do exactly what they did before. They... They take a shortcut. They just work a bunch of multiple choice questions or they think like the Ninja Notes only is going to get them over the proverbial, proverbial hump. I'm not going to edit that out. Um, and uh, so and so what they do is they end up scoring less than a 74 and they're like, dude. Um, and so what you do, you do exactly what you did before and then more multiple choice questions more Ninja Notes. If you're driving in your car, make sure you have that Ninja Audio on and not not the uh, ESPN radio app, which I'm a fan of. And, uh, I mean, 74. Okay, do exactly what you did before, but, like, okay, it's reg. So, okay, you know what what sections you don't want to study for, what sections you hate. So, like, like AMT. Okay, let's dig into AMT. Like kind exchanges... Uh, where there's a mortgage involved, mortgage swap involved. Okay, um, so let's let's dig into that. Um, twelve thirty one, twelve forty five, twelve fifty assets. You weren't entirely sure. You gave it the old college try on the exam. You score seventy four. Let's go over those intensively. Christina writes in: Does the AICPA grade you on the number of multiple choice questions you answered, or the total questions on the test? So, if I only answered 80 out of the 90, do they grade me on just those 80 or the total of 90? Well, I, I think it's the same thing because you basically start with a score of zero. Um, so, you you start with zero, and every and every question you get right is just you know moves you higher, which is why on your simulations, if you're like, oh no, I have one minute left and I have three tabs, um, you want to go in and just like, especially the drop down boxes, like, like you want to get going because you don't want to leave anything blank. I mean, um, uh, if you, if you leave it blank or if you put the wrong answer, it's the same outcome. So you, you give yourself a fighting chance if you put something in. Hope that answers that question. Lauren, <clears throat> Lauren says, <laughs> how many questions in each FAR test that are pre-test? Lauren, my understanding is, at least it was, and I assume it's still the case, um, up to 20%. So that's for FAR, that'd be 18 questions could be pre-test. So 
Um, if it seems like, man, 20, 20% of my exam was just stupid, well, it's very possible because they were pretest and don't count, unfortunately, or probably fortunately. Miles writes, how should I study during the last week before my exam? Okay, let's back up to um, two weeks before your exam. Hopefully, you've taken this killer set of notes on your legal pad and uh, <laughs> and you um, put that on silent. And so, and so you spend two weeks out rewriting your notes. And I mean, I've never had someone email me that said, hey, I rewrote the notes. Um, I wish I hadn't. Is it, does it suck? Yes, it does. It, it sucks. Um, it's not fun. And does your hand get tired? Is it, is it boring? Yes. Does it pay off? Yes. So that's two weeks out. So one week out. Um, so you have this killer set of rewritten notes, these little fact nuggets. They were, they were longhand. Now they're <laughs> fact nuggets. <laughs> and, um, so doesn't say what exam. So let's say it's far. Uh, you know that you are weakest in governmental accounting and not for profit, and um, for the life of you, you just cannot calculate pension expense. So uh, you start from your weakest topic and work down. So um, you work in your study software. You work twenty questions in study mode. You never do exam mode, you always do it in study mode because you get that instant feedback. Um, because up in, because the only time that, that you want to do exam mode is when you're actually in the exam. And so you do 20 questions over governmental accounting. And let's say you know that you just are horrible at that. Um, and so maybe you just click around on the answers for the first 20, build up some knowledge base, and then start answering them for real, still in study mode. And you keep doing highly intensive questions, topic intensive questions um, of 20 multiple choice questions. And you keep doing that until you score arbitrarily like 70%. And then you move on to the next topic. And you do that starting from your weakest topic down to your strongest topic. And, um, and that's how you do that. The whole time you're reviewing your notes, you're reading your ninja notes, you're listening to your Ninja audio on your uh, cracked iPhone <laughs> that you dropped in a high school parking lot on your way to visit your mother on a Tuesday morning because she likes it when you visit her at school. You can say hi and everyone says, oh, hi, it's your son. Anyway, that's when you dropped your iPhone. All right. Chris says, where can I find the codification tutorial for FAR? Is there a free reef? reef is there a free resource? Uh, go to the, Chris, go to the AICPA website and they have a sample test. And um, within the sample test, they will have the simulation and then they will have the entire um, accounting literature in there and you should practice that there. And it'll be the exact same as what you see on the exam. Justin says, say, I said, say, <laughs> I sound like that chicken from Looney Tunes. A boy, I say, I say a boy. <laughs> say I had two research questions. Uh, that might be a generational thing, um, which means I'm getting old if I may. Anyway, say I had two research questions on my audit exam. Um, is there any chance that they both count? So two research questions on the audit exam. Um, it used to be one of the research questions were pretest. And so how much does it count for? Not as much as the other tabs, um, or at least it was. And so all of that to say, I'm shooting in the dark here and I don't know. Does it matter to you as far as exam day? No. Um, but I honestly don't know if, if they're both pretest. And I, I assume that they haven't changed anything. I mean, you have like, what, six tabs? depending on the exam, and um, are they going to weigh your research component the same as one of the tabs that has like, you know, 
fill in the blank simulation topic? No. Finally, Carmelo writes, FAR has a massive amount of information to memorize. I am studying the fixed assets section and there are so many formulas. How do you remember everything? Um, FAR is especially tough because it's, as it's been said, it is a mile wide and an inch deep and um, you have to know at least a little about everything. So uh, this is where your, <laughs> and it's, that was a fail. Uh, prop number two, <laughs> you have your, you have your legal notes, your legal pad. And, uh, so you're watching your, your, your re review course and the instructor says something, um, highly memorable. So you hit pause, you write it down and you go through that process, go through all of your videos and then you go through your multiple choice questions. So you're in your book or you're, you're on your study software and you see something, oh, I'm going to forget that on exam day or yes, I know that now, but I'm going to forget it later. Write it down. And then later on, you rewrite your notes when you're at least two weeks out. And so how do you remember everything you study? It's because along the way, you've taken notes and you're reviewing them. You are, um, you are, Reading your ninja notes nonstop. <laughs> All right, that's the last time for that. And um, that's how you remember because people who just, I don't, I don't have a highlighter here for a prop because um, I gave all of my highlighters to my four-year-old daughter as should you. Um, or your four-year-old niece or nephew, you know, if you don't. Have, but yeah, highlighters are, highlighting is, is garbage. Um, because highlighting a book, what does that do? Nothing. Um, writing your own notes in your own voice that means something to you. That is how you remember the massive amount of information. Okay, well, this was short and sweet. I hope uh, this has been helpful to you. Send your questions, comments, and um, don't send any, any hate mail. I get that. I, I used to get a lot of hate mail, and now I think people just like don't. They, I don't know. They're, They've decided that they have better things to do with their lives. So, um, or there's other accounting websites where they can write hateful stuff. So, um, so yeah, go to another71.com, click on the upper right-hand corner, click Ask Jeff, and I will answer it in a future edition of the podcast. Um, hit me up on the forum. Um, hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of people there on the forum. Another 71 is getting like a million page views a month. So... Uh, actually more than that. So that's pretty cool. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you for listening. Keep rocking. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. You notice he never answers the question.